Ephesians. So we're talking about the sword of the Spirit, uh, thinking about Bible reading and, and the practice uh, of Bible reading. And uh, we've been meeting with different folks, hearing from them about their experience uh, in the Word of God. And uh, today we have uh, Ethan Eichelberg, and uh, we've confirmed he's not driving in the car he's in. <laughs> he's parked, but uh, we're glad to have Ethan, uh, Ethan and his, his wife, Tricia, uh, both uh, Bible readers, and um, you know, Ethan's got a great story about transformation uh, over this last year of how being in the Word of God has has really just changed everything. Uh, so, Ethan, we're super glad to have you here, and appreciate you taking the time to to chat with us uh, and just kind of you know diving into this question. Tell us about your experience with Bible reading and and maybe the the habit or discipline of Bible reading for you. Yeah, um, when you guys opened this up, I, I thought this was a, a good way to maybe give more of a, um, a blue collar work ethic type of guy to how I do things, you know, I mean, I, uh, I'm just like anybody else. I got I get up at, you know, pretty early in the morning and I'm on the road and uh, I found that um, that time on the road didn't necessarily have to be spent listening to talk radio, um, you know kind of pollutes your mind, I suppose. So I, I chose a different way. Um, but the the Bible reading um, kind of led into this. So um, we've had some difficulties over the past year, uh, just like anybody else has in 2020. Uh, but it also, I don't want to say renewed our faith, but strengthened our faith and strengthened our ability to, to take time to read the Bible and uh, that was every night, you know, every night. I, you know, I, I have skipped some nights here or there just because I'm tired. You know, it is, I, I, I can't, uh, can't deny that. But almost every night that uh, I'm reading. And I think uh, Pastor Sutton, I asked you about uh, some reading. Um, that led into, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big reader. And that led into just a phenomenal amount of reading that wish ultimately led me to uh, Bonhoeffer. Mm. So um, not, not uh, maybe not necessarily his fiery strength um, that he had towards the end, but how he approached Bible reading every day. Yeah, I, I, I know if you uh, follow Pastor Sutton for resources, you're going to get into some pretty... <laughs> Uh, you get in the weeds uh, pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just just to be, uh, uh, your habit is to read at night, or or do you listen in the car? What? Yes, Pastor, I, I have listened in the car, um, but uh, most of my reading is done at night. So what I've done is um, I keep a reading journal, and it's a prayer journal as well. And what I do is uh, I go ahead and. Um, I guess I call it a, a read, write, and meditate on the verse type of thing where, you know, the first thing I do, you know, at night on Sunday is I'll write down a particular passage in the Bible. Um, in this case, I'm working on Psalms right now. But uh, then I will uh, memorize that and meditate on that. The meditation part comes in through my drive into work. So instead of me, you know, uh, listening to talk radio, uh, what I end up doing is I just turn the radio off, no noise, no nothing. And for me, that's an hour drive. So that's an hour of meditating on one particular subject. And I think the volume is less probably than what you two gentlemen do. But for me, it allows me the quality of thinking on that verse every single day until Sunday or Saturday. And then when Sunday comes up, I start a new verse. And uh, I found that it's not just, I can read, I can read fast, but I can't absorb the complexity of the Bible just by reading fast. I could probably read the Bible in a month if I, if I really put it down to it, but I can't, I can't absorb everything God's trying to tell me. Yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that, um, you know, people that have hung out with me much know that uh, I, I, I generally am talking about quantity. Well, you know, read read this much and this much and this much, and that that should never be confused with what you're doing. And I I think there there's not a right. It's not an either or. And 
Yeah. So I, I really appreciate you saying, because we haven't talked a lot about that, about really zeroing in on one word or, you know, one passage. It's like in uh, uh, one of the prayers of the church, it's read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest the word of God. And, um, you know, sometimes you just kind of are skimming it and that's none of those things. So that's cool. That's, that's good to hear. Um, uh, what, what did, as you do that, what have you found helpful to really stick with it? What, uh, are, are there other, uh, you mentioned you have a journal. Uh, what else do you find helpful to really stick with your discipline? Um, so again, removing the noise, that, remove, that means removing all noise. Uh, so uh, Trisha and I live out in the country, um, but we've also taken the, you know, um, our Facebook time is really minimal and not like we're disciplining each other. Like you read, you've been on Facebook for five minutes longer than you should have nothing like that, but it's more of, we don't post anything on there too much anymore. Um, and one of it's out of respect for Trisha and what happened to, to her. Uh, but uh, um, also I, I think it's important that the first words of the day, like Bonhoeffer, Need to be God's words, and that sets the tone. I, I I guess I can't explain that. I couldn't tell a non-believer what that means, but to to anybody who has a Christian faith, when the first words are God's words, you do not make a mistake. I mean, that is that is clearly the right. It's eating breakfast in the morning. It's setting their day off on the right foot, for sure. And I found that I'm I'm kind of an aggressive person, but when I've set my day off with God's words being the first words, either through the Lord's Prayer or, or uh, that particular passage in the Bible that it helps the day and also helps me keep me rooted in reading the Bible for sure. Now, I just have to say, you started by saying, you know, I'm just a blue collar guy, but here <laughs> you are living out and quoting Bon Hafer. So, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> That's good. Well, what I what I love about that, I mean, yeah, because you brought it on, you're getting deep on us here, so I I got to play that too. Um, <laughs> it's so neat to think about how the the the, the daily life uh, that we live is a repetition of so many things. Where sleep is like death, and waking up is like resurrection, and every morning is like the first day of creation in some sense. And I love how you said, you know, about Bonhoeffer um, letting God's word be the first word, um, and you just think, you know. God's first word in creation, let there be, and there was, yeah. you know, and, and just um, to, to begin every day, like the beginning of creation with God speaking first. I mean, that's powerful stuff, but uh, I love it. Yeah. So you know, uh, uh, let me just jump in. A, I know we have another question. Um, that business about quiet, because mm. uh, I know uh, that's the thing Pastor Sutton's talked about too, that there's just something about the quiet and the space. We we shouldn't let your comments about quiet go by too quietly. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, I guess on that note, the um, I, I the way you put it or can put it, I guess, is uh, the the input that we receive in modern society is so vast and so complicated that you got to get rid of that. To or, in order to understand anything complicated you got to get rid of all that you know you don't uh you don't want to approach this lightly and um I, I, and honestly the noise that's out there um the only news i heard that was interesting over the past week was unfortunately alex trebek dying you know i mean that was really the only thing that um captured my attention and uh and trisha and i honestly we haven't watched the news that much even local news it's just what am i going to learn you know if i want to know the weather i'll look it up on my phone other than that, I kind of got it, you know, at this point. Um, Sounds like something Pastor Sutton was telling me earlier. <laughs> this week, but, but that's another story. Yeah. Ethan is a man after my own heart in many ways. But yeah. Well, uh, you, you've obviously you kind of touched on this in many ways. But, you know, if you had to put it down to one kind of single word or, or something, what, what's been a blessing or an impact, you know, from being in the Word of God and, and these practices you're talking about? Just if you kind of had to say, this is it, you know, how is it, how has it changed your life? Just the quality of understanding. Well, part of my prayers is uh, for God to 
help me understand him. And uh, so I, I look at that as um, the quality. And uh, I guess I've, I've, I've looked at these verses and especially since memorizing and meditating on them, it's not a, a light duty subject, you know, and, and just the quality of the, of the, of the words and the impact of what it has on me is, is phenomenal. Just purely the blessing is the quality. Mm. Yeah. 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 I know you guys um, uh, coming into the church, not too long after that, I know you had a death in the family yeah. and uh, that you guys have faced some tragedy. And, and I think about, uh, you know, just to hear you kind of the under control and peaceful and uh, calm kind of spirit that, that that all must give you. You know, I, I think of the email I sent you guys that somebody did ask us, how did we, because this was shortly after the death, um, that, uh, how, how are you guys able to maintain? It was just our faith. You know, uh, that's it. Pure yeah. and simple. How about, uh, what do you do um, when you run into something you don't understand? and uh, Or you run into something in the Bible that you don't understand? Or I think we could even say, what if it's something you don't agree with? What, what do you do when you get stuck? Ironically enough, there is stuff that I don't agree with, but it's probably the understanding. You know, I, I, some of the, you know, like I, I, I written pages on this, the struggle of, of Israel leaving Egypt and, you know, why it just, to me, it's just like, why, why would that be such a struggle? But I guess that kind of makes sense now that I'm not to know everything. And, you know, it, I look at um, study Bibles that have been, I, I bought a new one recently that uh, has annotations from St. Augustine and other people in it that maybe help clarify a couple of things. And yeah, I'm an electrician, <laughs> but yeah. And then, uh, you know, I, I think that reading, um, you know, I don't know if I get points for this and Pastor Sutton's books were pretty dang good. And, <laughs> I, I, as far as the commission is piece. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that, that that helped me maybe go down towards a idea of um, you know, theology and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, complicated stuff. Yeah, well, and, and just it's so neat to um, just hearing this whole conversation, but like the quality and the, the depth of it, I think that's a you know, there's different ways to go at Bible reading, of course, and there's the um, the broad view and then the really, really slow and deep. And it's neat to see how both of those are possible. Um, now, just kind of what advice might you have to someone who maybe doesn't have a practice of Bible reading or has or is kind of stuck? Just any sort of here's my, my encouragement to you kind of thing? Um, I, I would say start small, hmm. you know, keep it simple and don't overcommit. You know, if you think that you're going to read and understand everything in uh, um, Deuteronomy in one night, you're not. You know, it's uh, it's going to take some time and um, start small. And if you keep it simple and you don't overcommit, try that way with a lot of things in life that you tend to be a little bit more successful. You know, one verse a week, you, know, you can do that. Almost anybody can do that. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, your, your practice is kind of similar to mine where... I like having one verse kind of, or one chapter or whatever, rattling around my head the whole week. Cause then yeah. you see all these connections and you keep hearing that again, but then you find all these points of contact, you know, kind of day in and day out. So yeah, yeah. Well, hey, Ethan, this has been, this has been great and uh, super enlightening and, and just love to hear your, your take on this. And so thanks for taking the time and yeah. it's been encouraging to me and I'm sure it'll be encouraging to the folks that watch this uh, Pastor Davis, you want to close this in a word of prayer? Sure. Uh, Father in heaven, we give you thanks that you have revealed yourself. You have revealed your love for us in Jesus Christ through your word, your word that's new every day, uh, your word that gives life and salvation. And so we thank you for the word. It's uh, great to talk to Ethan. Uh, bless him and Tricia in their walk with you. Continue to sustain them. A day by day by your word and and be with us as a congregation and and even beyond the congregation and in days of difficulty uh, we, we don't go out into the world unarmed we have the sword of the spirit the word of God and, and we pray that you would bless us and build us up in that word day by day 
Uh, your word is truth. Your word is life. Your word is Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.